here today. So my, my title, as uh, Guillermo mentioned, is Don't Touch My Toys and, and um, an Inesource Lesson from a Childhood. My name is Eric Keller. I'm an Inesource Technology Lead at Roche. And I am delighted to be here with you. Uh, just some short story. Uh, how did it came to this talk today? So uh, not so long ago, I attended a bit late, yes, uh, to an inner source uh, community call, inner source commons community call. And I, I, I was alone with my child. And uh, when I joined, I, I forgot to mute and, and Claire, Claire kind of muted me. And uh, we started a discussion and said, well, uh, isn't your child interested in inner source? And I said, not at all. At the moment, it's quite the opposite. My child is three years old and he struggles really heavily in sharing his toys with others. And continuing over this discussion, um, I, I kind of uh, attended uh, the, the call of paper. I, I, I put down some, some abstract and, and here I am. And uh, let's go through kind of the insights of uh, children and uh, modern uh, organization of today. So as you can imagine, um, children have difficulty to share. And this is, not, this is just a subset of all what you can find in, in research uh, in, in the internet. So uh, young children often have a strong sense of ownership uh, over their belongings. Um, sharing toys kind of uh, means giving up control over the toys or the situation. Uh, depending on which uh, development stage they are, they, they could be quite egocentric and uh, do not understand the perspective or, of others' needs. Um, an emotional attachment to the toys can also be reflected as uh, they have the, the, the feeling when they give away a toy or share a toy, um, it's giving away something which provides them a sense of security or, or comfort. Um, they, they also sometimes could believe that if they share a toy, they, they, they will have less for themselves. So they, they, it's kind of these limited resources around, around the toys and sharing. And obviously, last but not least, they, they have a fear of loss. If you share a toy and... Uh, the little boy or girl takes the toy with them and you will never see it again. Or if it comes back, it's broken, even worse. So the same would also um, apply to um, organizations where you, you could have like similar um, case where, where sharing becomes a challenge. And, and this can be applied on organization level, but it could also apply to individual contributors or teams or departments. So you also have a strong ownership uh, and pride of what people are doing. If it's source code or, or knowledgeable work, it, it, can, it can also have this strong ownership and pride of work. You don't want to share it because uh, it, it could also imply that you are in competition internally and uh, this could affect the bottom line of your performance evaluation. You don't trust your colleagues because you do not know them really well and you don't know what their intention are with uh, sharing this code. Uh, but more, moreover, uh, which is uh, sometimes really difficult to also address, is when uh, um, you have knowledge hoarding, where people kind of uh, sit on a lot of knowledge and, and, and source code, and they don't want to give up this control um, over um, kind of a security uh, in their position within the organization. Obviously, uh, the culture within an organization is um, also something which can strongly influence how people we share code or knowledge among the organization. And same as children, you have the fear of loss. Like you share your code, you don't know what will happen. You lose completely the control. And what if others would change your code and you strongly disagree with, with what they are doing? So that's kind of the same, um, the same thing happen within, within uh, adults. So how can we improve uh, sharing skills and, and uh, for, for children, it's quite straightforward. Orange play dates. Uh, so the more they try to share with others, the more they get used to it and they, they kind of play the mechanics of sharing. Uh, you have some role models, parents, caregivers, uh, wider communities where you, you, your uh, children or children in general can kind of understand the mechanics of sharing and, and have a role model. Uh, Positively reinforced means that if one, one child is sharing, appraise him saying, well done, uh, give them some, some kind of uh, uh, appraisal or, or small rewards. Um, help children to understand how the action affects others. 
this is kind of the empathy. It's most probably one of the most complicated things to, to learn to, to children. And obviously, last but not least, promoting fairness. If you share this toy, the other child may give you this toy or play around having just one toy, say, okay, you can take turns, like five minutes, the, the, the kids can play with your toy, but then it gives you back. Same kind of um, improvements would apply to an enterprise or a company. So uh, first of all, you, you have to ensure that uh, leaderships actively support and promote a culture of collaboration. Um, the, the promotion of uh, collaborative culture and knowledge sharing is key for an overall organization to, to provide kind of this incentive for anybody within the organization to share more. And obviously, when you have um, people who, who share with each other, you, you, you need to recognize them. You need to kind of, uh, as in children, like to, 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 to give them some, some incentive to continue. And this could be by just naming them in some town hall and give them kind of this pride of, yeah, you did something right. Uh, you, you also need to have clear guidelines of what you expect uh, when you share code or, or knowledge within your company. So you, you have clear expectation of how collaboration would work. And last but not least, you, you need maybe to train and educate and give kind of the individual an understanding what the benefits of sharing within your organization look like. So you can imagine we, we have like done all this uh, to some extent in organization, but, but still it doesn't work like this. And sometimes the engineers are now open to share, maybe not the, the majority, not, not the one which are ordering on, on, their, on their knowledge, but the, the majority is kind of intrinsically motivated to share and still the organization structure and hierarchy prevents it from happening. So that, that's, that's another dimension of just having like a parent showing to the children how to share and why sharing is so important. It's, it's more like an organizational kind of structure which could hinder uh, collaboration. So I will get through four more points, which hopefully gives you some insight on, on how to approach them. So first of all, uh, what, what, what's ho open, often, often happens is that people are not able to share because they do not have a, a, a kind of a, a central place where to openly uh, and, and access knowledge from other teams. So what is really key here and what I would like to, to emphasize is you need to start to have a place where you have an open and accessible platform. With open and accessible, I, I mean that uh, you need to, as easy as it gets, to self-service and to get started within minutes. No kind of paywall, no kind of uh, tidious kind of uh, trainings over weeks to, to get access to the, to, the, to the platform. You just need to be able to share and have one, which is really essential where you gather most of your um, enterprise knowledge. Um, this uh, could be summarized in before having the challenge of engineer not sharing the work. We need to have an open and accessible platform where everyone, and literally everyone means engineers, but also managers, leaders, quality, everyone has access and, and they can um, expose and share the work. Obviously, we already discussed about this a, a bit before, but leaders are kind of the facilitator of, of collaboration. You, you need to have a leadership support in your kind of of transformative journey into collaboration and, and inner source. And, and these leaders have, have a key role and a, a role model of leading by example and fostering a positive environment where uh, we can grow uh, and cultivate uh, collaboration um, even further. So this is where leaders have the pivotal role of supporting collaboration and help to shift the company culture towards more collaboration, transparency, and knowledge sharing. They're kind of the, the, the person also which, which acts like in children, like role models as parents or, or adults to, to give these layers uh, of, of an organization and to navigate towards more collaboration. Sometimes, even after having an open kind of platform where everybody can put their work and, and share it openly, you have leaders which are pushing really forward, it still doesn't work. Even if they're really top of the company, like the C-suite, the CEO, CIO, CTO, they're all in 
to more collaboration. They just cry for more collaboration within teams, within departments. And the bottom, like engineers and knowledgeable workers, they, they are also willing to do more collaboration. They would like to help each other. And you have a sick middle layer, which sometimes have wrong incentive. They do more politics than uh, fostering collaboration. They have like tight time schedule to deliver a product or a, a product project. They, they, they are a tight budget constraint. And often you will hear like, I own these resources and these resources only allow to deliver on my project. So this is completely hindering the, the possibility of, of collaboration. And here also we need to have a, a strong kind of um, top level decision maybe uh, at some point, but also uh, a possibility to, instant, to, to provide the right incentive to the middle layer and say, we embed more goals about collaboration. So the very top, like CEO level, will meet with the very bottom, the engineers to in the middle and, and provide more, more collaboration. So this could be summarized in, like, in a corporate landscape, and it's not only applying to my company. Any big corporation will have the same kind of challenges. Sea level dreams of more collaboration. Literally, you see it in tone halls, in slides. Like we need to collaborate more. We need to be more efficient. Yet the aspiration gets lost in the middle, where where the middle layer uh, do politics, and and they are often little kingdoms, which hinders engineers and knowledgeable worker uh, from sharing, collaborating. Well, you can imagine that this is not all. When you when you start to gather your enterprise knowledge on source code on one platform you will need to identify like what i call integrators or connectors these are people who which have an holistic really holistic broad view about the products the technology uh, which which the product are built upon and they start to kind of scheme through um, source codes and and, and projects and identify redundancies and the, the, the main job is to meet and, and, and read these teams and, and put them all together in a room and make a, a kind of decision all together and usually driven by engineering about um, consolidating um, over one kind of the, the product on, on the technologies uh, among these products. So this, this is usually when you start an inner source journey, it could be it could be uh, some some um, areas like a design system. You would have tremendous amount of various dif different design system representing your look and feel of a company. But try to harmonize themselves. Put all the people uh, building all these design system in one room and try to come up with one design system and invite everybody to collaborate to this one. So other examples are kind of uh, machine learning kind of platforms or even IT tools. So this could be summarizing while the unified platform gathers shareable components. Integrators or connectors uh, identify redundancies and bring them uh, uh, together, like competing teams uh, together in the goal of streamlining technologies in order to enhance uh, speed and efficiency. So that's kind of the four kind of other points which could improve greatly uh, collaboration within your organization. And um, I would just summarize this as the key takeaway of our inner source uh, journey within the Roche group. So having an open and accessible platform, this enables people to look right and left. And uh, this is really important. If you don't see the red cars on the shelves of the room, you will not even be tempted to start to play with them. So that, that's an, a key enabler. Leadership support, and to some extent, higher sea level support about this kind of cultural change is key uh, and 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 you will have uh, huge struggles if you don't get that and finally integrator the connector are kind of the people leveraging inner source uh, principles and patterns to accelerate and and most importantly to scale uh, the way how to inner source within your company so I guess I'm almost on time. Um, that's the last kind of message I would like to, to, to provide to you. Like much like the patience required when children learns how to share the toys. The journey of a company adopting inner source 
needs time and belief in the power of collaboration. With that, I would be open for questions. <laughs>